So on this one, um, I want to start with just a little theoretical note that our integration by parts formula, again, it came from looking at the product rule. And then we integrate. And the reason I'm doing this again is because I want to illustrate what happens when you have a definite integral. Okay, those dx's cancel, and I end up with the definite integral from a to b of u dv. So we're going to, we're going to identify a u that becomes simpler when we differentiate it, so that this leftover integral is easier than the one we started with. So I'm going to say u is x squared in this case. And then I want to look at, at the subtle thing that happens when it's a definite integral. So to do this integral, I have to guess the antiderivative of that. Well, it's, it's the derivative of uv, so the thing you differentiate to get it is uv. So you could just say integration and differentiation undo each other, but I am trying was trying to be a little more precise about it. So I guess the antiderivative of this, and then I evaluate it across the endpoints. So this has to be done. And then I have minus a definite integral with the same limits of integration, VDU. So that's the only change that happens when it's a definite integral. Just make sure that you evaluate this part UV across the same limits of integration. All right, so I'm going to try to break my integral up, just identifying part of it as U and part of it as DV. And I'll try to be a little more systematic about it. So I have U equals X squared. That means du, and maybe just to offer a little deeper explanation, d, du, the differential of u, is the derivative with respect to x multiplied by dx. If you don't believe me, then cancel out the dx's and you can see that it's true. All right, so then du dx is 2x. All right, and then dv is sine x dx. And that means v is going to be the integral of that piece, so negative cosine x. And then I'm ready to plug in into integration by parts. So my original integral, the integral of zero from 0 to pi, x squared sine x dx, is going to be given by uv, so negative x squared cosine x. evaluated from 0 to pi minus the integral from 0 to pi of v du. So v is negative cosine x. I'm going to pull out the minus sign, put the cosine x there. And then du is 2x dx. I'm going to pull the 2 out in front while I'm at it. And again, I had an x there. All right, so you may as well, if you, if you have a definite integral case, you may as well evaluate this part while you're writing down the next step for computing this integral. Um, so if I put in the lower limit into this, replacing x with 0, I'm going to get a 0 out of that first part, so the whole thing is 0. The upper limit's the only survivor here. So I have a negative pi squared cosine of pi, but cosine of pi is negative 1, so... That's going to make this positive. And then I have plus 2 times this integral. And I'll go ahead and just rewrite it this way to make it look a little more familiar. I suppose the brackets aren't doing much. Um, and then I realize, oh, that, that integral is another integration by parts. So every time you choose a u, and then differentiate it, it's going to knock down the power of x on this. Um, I went from x squared to x, so I got something a little bit easier. The next time, I'll finally just get a constant, and I'll be able to, to wrap things up. So I'm going to just do this again. I'm going to go let u equal x. du is dx. Let dv equal cosine x dx. V must be sine x. And apply integration by parts. 
that pi squared is still hanging out. All right, so I end up with uv, so that's x sine x, evaluated across the endpoints, 0 to pi, minus the integral of v du. v is sine x, du is dx. And again, I just I like to evaluate right away on this piece. And when I plug in the pi, I get sine pi, and that's 0. And when I plug in 0, I get 0 times sine of 0, which is another 0. Um, so this whole piece vanishes. So I have pi squared, and then I have a negative 2 in front of that integral, minus 2 times this integral, which is negative. I lost my limits of integration there. Uh, negative cosine x. Okay, yeah, I think that looks good. A lot of minus signs. So finally, I get pi squared, and then when I plug in a pi into this, I get cosine of pi, which is negative 1. And when I plug in a 0, oops, I'm just going to go ahead and... No, I think I'll just write it this way. And then when I plug in a zero, I have to subtract that lower limit. So I have minus two cosine of zero, um, which is one, so minus two. 